Now, th what this study did was took 20 vegetables and six different cooking methods from baking and frying and boiling, griddling on a, um, what's his name? Mike Tyson uh, grill, is uh, George Foreman grill. <laughs> Microwaving and pressure cooking. Now, I'm gonna share with you what they found. Hey guys, welcome back. Now, this video is gonna be awesome. It's gonna be super short and tight, but it's gonna give you so much value that I really am excited to share this with you. What we're talking about today is when you take different vegetables and you cook them in various different ways, what happens to the nutrition profile? So Jamie asked a really cool question on the last post that I made about broccoli and said, even when you cook it in this way, so I really want to be able to give you guys some information when it comes to cooking your vegetables, how to maximize the um, nutritional profile, and it's really counterintuitive. It's not at all what you think. It's not at all what I would have ever guessed, and I'm just gonna give you the basically the hard data here, okay? So what you're seeing here, this is, a, I took a couple of screenshots here, so pardon if they're maybe even a little blurry. I'm not sure how big your screen is when you're looking, but don't worry about it. I just wanted to show you the study that this is coming from. Now, if we move forward here, what we're looking at is the following vegetables. Uh, we're looking at a bunch. We're looking at artichokes, asparagus. We're looking at cauliflower, carrots, celery, uh, garlic, all kinds of stuff like this, okay? There's a list of about 20 vegetables. Now, th what this study did was took 20 vegetables and six different cooking methods from baking and frying and boiling, griddling on a, um, what's his name? Mike Tyson uh, grill, is uh, George Foreman grill, <laughs> microwaving and pressure cooking. So they did three separate measurements of antioxidants. And what they did here is effectively take 300 separate experiments of what's the best way to cook our veggies, right? They've got 20 veggies and six different cooking methods. So they got a lot of information here. Now, I'm gonna share with you what they found. Now, I'll leave this picture up here for a little because um, these are the cooking methods that we're looking at. So what is the worst cooking method? Now, if you look across the board, on average for these 20 vegetables, the worst one is boiling. And the second worst is pressure cooking. Now, the reason that these are, they leach the most amount of nutrients is because it's a water immersion process. And so in the water, you're gonna leach out some of the nutrients and they're gonna be in the water, then you drain it out and you lose those nutrients, basically. So how bad is it? Well, when using um, even, one, even boiling, which is the worst, you only lose about 14% of the nutritional profile. In this case, it was measured in antioxidants, 14%. So that means that if you were to, you know, eat some boiled broccoli and you, you would have to eat about seven florets in order to equal the amount of nutrients in about six florets of raw broccoli. So it's not even that big of a deal, honestly. So what's the best way to cook your veggies? In general, it's whatever way is gonna get them in your mouth and in your belly, whatever you find to be the most palatable. Now, the exception here is deep frying because deep frying adds a whole bunch of, of empty calories and it's a different story. Aside from deep frying, you can cook them basically however you want. You're only gonna lose a little bit. It is better raw most of the time, but let's zoom in on that because uh, with some vegetables, they actually get better with their nutritional profile when you cook them. Some of them get worse and some of them stay about the same. I'm gonna tell you exactly which vegetables do which. So the best cooking method is actually, I never would have guessed this, but it's actually microwaving. Now I'm not recommending microwaving because I don't even have a microwave in my house. Uh, it does, doesn't feel right to me to have microwaves around myself. Uh, it doesn't do much for me and I don't think things taste good when they come out of it. But I'm reporting on the science here for you. Microwaving actually preserves up to 97.3% of the nutrients in a vegetable. That's pretty amazing. And that's an average across 20 vegetables though. So let's zoom in a little bit more on the specific vegetables and which ones break the mold. This is kind of cool. So the, these are some of your takeaways. The veggies which lost 
the least amount of nutrients. And we're also going to look at the vegetables which are most vulnerable, okay? So the most vulnerable vegetable is actually a bell pepper. So if you uh, eat a raw bell pepper, that beats anything else that you could ever do to it. So please eat raw bell peppers. I think they taste way better raw than cooked anyway. So that's a winner. Um, but some veggies weren't actually affected by cooking at all. And those are were the artichokes, the beets, and the onions. So it doesn't matter if you eat an onion raw or cooked. Eww, raw sounds a bit rough. Um, but feel free to cook in any method that you want. Artichokes, beets, and onions, they, their nutritional profile stays the same. Raw, cooked, whatever. It doesn't matter. Boil away, right? Asparagus is also unaffected by everything except frying. If you fry asparagus, you're going to lose a lot of its nutritional profile. So here is the, uh, the like kick-ass little nugget for you. There are two vegetables, there's almost three, I'll tell you about them, which actually increase in nutrition availability when you cook them. What are those? Carrots and celery. Carrots and celery. So um, making a vegetable soup that has a base of a stock of carrots and celery is actually going to give you more nutritional value than if you ate them raw, which is really amazing because those are two of my favorite vegetables to eat raw. Dip them in some hummus, dip them in some almond butter, or just eat them raw. Very good. Um, they actually get better when you cook them. Now, green beans actually um, go up in nutritional value when you cook them in everything except for the microwave as well. So. Uh, I encourage you guys to just uh, basically get your veggies in any way that you can. If you're going to cook them, don't worry about it. Uh, avoid deep frying if you can. Boiling and pressure cooking are not preferable. As long as you avoid deep frying, pressure cooking, and boiling, you're going to basically either lose almost no nutrient value, stay the same, or in some cases, go up. Now, I'll review those really quick. Which ones go up? It's three of them. It's carrots. It's carrots. Celery and green beans actually go up in nu nutrient value when you cook them. So I hope that was helpful. Um, this is a callback kind of to the last video that I made on, or last post that I made on broccoli. Um, and so I'll recap that really quick, is if you are a caffeine consumer, drinking coffee in the morning or chocolate uh, even, if you are a caffeine consumer and you are not having the best quality sleep, well, we know, duh, right, that caffeine is a stimulant and will impede deep sleep. It may even impede your ability to fall asleep. But there is a compound in broccoli, an enzyme, that when you get it out of the broccoli and uh, you know basically filter it through your liver, the, the enzyme actually has the ability to break down the caffeine quicker. And so I propose that if you eat broccoli, it takes about five hours for that to happen. So if you eat broccoli uh, at lunch, basically, or even for breakfast, which is awesome, put it in your smoothie, then you're going to counteract some of the effects of the caffeine later in the day. And you're gonna get it out of your system better, and I argue that you are gonna be able to sleep better and recover better. So I encourage you to use this information to cook broccoli, uh, eat it raw if you can, lightly uh, boil it is, is the worst, but just add in one extra flora and you're gonna be A-OK. -okay. Just get it in however you can, and I hope that you guys found this useful. I'll see you again soon.